Hey there, and welcome to Inside Butler Football. I'm your host, JoJo Gentry. The Bulldogs are PFL co-champions after defeating Moorhead State 58-27. to We'll be joined by Butler head football coach Jeff Forrest to talk about last week's game and to take a look at the possible postseason play. Stay with us on Inside Butler Football. Coach Boris, thank you so much for being in the studio today. Good to be back. So the Butler offense had a great day with 640 yards and 58 points. So what were some of the key plays that allowed the offense to continue its momentum against Moorhead State prior to the victory against Dayton? Well, I mean, the, the last couple weeks, I think we've really built on uh, our success, Dayton through Valpo into Moorhead. So um, it's preparation. It's, you know, the way they go about their, their studying during the week and how they practice and their tempo and those type of things. And, you know, we, we've done a, a great job up front. You know, all year we've, we've uh, protected the quarterback. We've done a good job of communicating and, and making calls up front to allow our guys to, to make plays out, you know, outside and in space. And, uh, you know, Matt had another great game. Trey, Brendan, you know, those three guys continued to, to play well. So, uh, you know, we've, it's been a good run, um, and every week's gotten a little better, and that's that's what you want this time of year, that you, every time you're out, um, whether it's a game or practice, you're getting a little bit better. And the defense had a good day as well, giving up only one third down conversion, but they kind of seemed to struggle coming out at the halftime, giving up two quick touchdowns. So how did the defense respond, and how did their response impact the rest of the game? Well, I mean, I, I think defensively is very much like our offense. We've gotten better uh, – you know, as the season's gone on, and like you mentioned, the, the ability to get off the field on third down has been critical um, to our success in the league. They've, they've been better each week. And, you know, when you play in our league, um, you know, every week you got a challenge. So, I mean, we didn't expect Moorhead State not to show up in the, in the second half, and, um, you know, they're very capable. So what we needed to do was um, to focus and, and, and make a play, and that's what happened. They, they had a couple touchdowns, they got a couple scores, they got some momentum, and then we got the, the, the key cause fumble there by defense, kind of settled everyone down defense, and we were able to stick it in, and everyone kind of um, relaxed a little bit and started playing again. And Trey Heater was named Offensive Player of the Week for the second time this year. Can you talk about how his accomplishments have impacted the Butler football program? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, for four years, he's been impacting our program. And, um, you know, people get to see him on Saturday afternoon. I'm very fortunate, and our staff and administrators and his teammates are around him all the time. They get to see him every day. And he's, he's just a special, special um, person, student athlete. Um, had impacted, has impacted our program in a lot more ways than the, the yards gained on the field. And the Bulldogs' victory against Moorhead State allowed for Butler the second time to have a PFL championship. So describe how you felt after the game and how this win impacts the program. I mean, I was really excited for our, for our players first and foremost, our, our, our seniors, the guys that were here last year. Um, it's quite a challenge to, to have to repeat um, when, you, when you put the bullseye on and have to go through the the conference uh, season again. I mean, they did a great job of, of saying this is what they wanted to do and working towards that goal. Um, you know, so I was excited for them. I'm excited for our, our staff. We, we're very fortunate here and um, to have the coaching staff that we do. It does a great job um, with our guys. And, you know, we, we were fortunate to be able to keep most of the staff from last year. And that's that's critical, you know, in a, in a championship run um, to be able to to keep your staff together. So I, I was excited for those guys and just to see them on the field celebrating, s singing a fight song was, uh, was well worth it. All right, well, Coach, let's take a look at a few highlights. The first highlight is a touchdown pass from Matt Lancaster to sophomore wide receiver Marquise Martin Hayes. Coach, can you talk about what made this play successful and the ability of Marquise to finish in the end zone? Yeah, I mean, uh, Mar Marquise does a great job and running after the catch. I mean, that, that's just physical play getting in. Um, you know, what made it go was, you know, 11 guys doing their job and, and Coach Connor dialing up the right play. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a similar scheme to we use, that we've been using, um, put it in a little different formation, gave it a little different wrinkle with motion. So Coach Connor's done a great job of getting our guys in the right place and um, at the right time. And 
here once again. You got 11 guys doing the right job, and a guy finishing strong. You got you got an opportunity to make a play. And the second highlight is a forced fumble by senior safety Jamie Zafranski. This turnover killed the momentum for Moorhead State offense and led to another Butler touchdown. So how important was this turnover? Well, this is what we talked about earlier. This was the play I had mentioned. They came out in the second half, which you, you knew they would. Um, uh, they, they scored early, and, and they got a turnover and scored again and kind of cut that lead, and we needed something positive to happen, and that's what we tell our guys. At some point, someone's going to have to step up and make a play within the system, and um, Jamie does a great job there getting the ball out. That allowed us to, to get possession again and go down and score and kind of, you know, settle everyone down a little bit uh, and get back in a football game. The third highlight is a sack by junior nose tackle Glenn Summers. So, Coach, how good is it to see some of your interior defensive linemen get a sack and be able to put pressure on the quarterback? Well, th this was a critical part of the game because, you know, we we'd built a lead and we, had, we were trying to run clock and get them off the field. And, they do a nice job. We're, you know, we're in a three-man rush there, but all three guys do their job. They, they, they push the pocket and, um, you know, get the quarterback to step out, step up and spill out. And Glenn was able to get off a block and make that play. And I think that was, uh, you know, his second one on that that uh, series of plays. So that was uh, um, big, big in the game, no question. The last highlight is a touchdown run by PFL Player of the Week, Trey Heater, to, to secure the victory. How good is it to see your team captain finish strong for the year? Well, th this was a great try. We had, we had two drives in the second half that, that ate a lot of clock, and most of it was done on the ground, and um, Trey carrying most of those runs. But the, the offensive line did a good job. We had to convert a couple fourth downs to get down to this point. And, um, you know, when you're down that tight and the box is loaded up on you, naturally you're going to have to make one guy miss, and Trey does. But we do a good job of getting a body on a body. Trey makes the one miss and, and runs it in and, and, and caps a, a, a good fourth quarter drive there. Well, Coach, thank you very much for your input. No problem. So this is the first year that the PFL receives an automatic bid to the FCS playoffs. But going into the week, there was a three-way tie for the PFL championship between Butler, Marist, and San Diego. But San Diego held the tiebreaker, having beaten both Butler and Marist this season. But last Thursday, San Diego released a statement saying that they're withdrawing from the tournament and for the rest of the season. So could you talk about how San Diego no longer contending for the championship impacts conference standings as well as Butler's abilities to compete for the rest of the year? Well, I mean, it, it took it from a three-way tie with San Diego holding the tiebreakers down to a two-way tie with us and Maris. So now it, it's, a, it's coming down to a Butler-Marist tiebreaker. And with how, having, not having played each other, um, it's going to come down to computer rankings that should come out sometime this week. So coming into the week between Butler and Marist, if one team won and the other team lost, the winner would receive an automatic bid to the FCS play. So how did this impact the significance or emotions of the coaching staff and the players this week? Well, I mean, <clears throat> the, the great thing is we had tremendous leadership last week because they, they knew Saturday afternoon had nothing to do with the playoffs and nothing to do with Marist or or San Diego, it was about Moorhead State and Butler and are preparing to play a 60-minute football game. If you didn't come out of it 7-1 and one and you had a second loss, none of it mattered. So it was a football game, and we had tremendous leadership and great preparation getting ready last week. And I think that was the, the biggest factor. What, whatever your motivation is that leads to your will to prepare is, is important. And our guys' motivation uh, was to – to win number seven in the league and, and get ourselves to a point where we could be in the discussion. And, you know, at this point, we're still waiting to see and we'll uh, it'll work out one way or another. But we played very well on Saturday and I'm proud of the way they prepared and the way they competed Saturday. So having now this week, Maris and Butler both won their games this week. How will the tiebreaker be settled? Well, that's it. We, without having played each other and basically the, the next thing would be similar opponents, which, I mean, we both had the, the, the San Diego loss. So it, it comes down to computer rankings, and you're in the process of waiting to see how the, all those play out and where they have Butler and where they have Marist, and we'll find out here in a, in a day or two. Now, that was my next question. When will you yeah, find yeah, out? That's, that's, you know, hopefully tomorrow. 
But, uh, you know, it could be a couple days as they go through all those rankings and figure out uh, which way it's going to go. So going forward, what's, what's the schedule this week for the dogs? Well, you, you're in a little bit of a waiting game, but at the same time, you have to be prepared if, if you're the team chosen to move forward. So, uh, you know, we're going to treat it like an open week, like it would be in the middle of the season. We'll give them some time off, practice a little bit, and, um, you know, hopefully have to go and continue practicing, but we'll, we'll wait and see. So we're going to give them a little time off, let them breathe a little bit, uh, get their bodies healthy, uh, focus back and, you know, really get into the classroom stuff and get caught up and, you know, we'll move forward uh, as we need to. Well, Coach Forrest, thank you so much for being in the studio today. It was great having you. Appreciate being here. Thank you. And thank you for watching Inside Butler Football. I'm JoJo Gentry. Have a great week, Bulldog fans.